Well, praise the Lord. We are excited that we're here to worship today. Is my mic off again? It is not working. I, I got a light. I'm on. Am I on? We have a microphone. That's awesome. Hey, we have a, uh, I got a short clip I'd like to play. And so if you could, let's, let's watch this while Paul's working on it, please. Here we go. It's like my favorite part of the year. Yeah, I, I don't know how you can watch that and not get teary-eyed. Like that, that, if you were here for the night of Thanksgiving, the night of Thanksgiving was a month and a half ago, and we do a slideshow of the last year, November to November, and, and so Jocelyn wasn't in there because she's going to be in next year. So you're like, wait, where's Joss? She'll be in next year, okay? And I, I thought, well, I could add her. That's, that's like my favorite part, okay? Because you watch a year of activity, a year of activity, and then you get to see all the people who made a decision to follow Christ, Follow Christ and be baptized. Get your Bibles, please. Get your Bibles and go to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. And, and I, like to, I like to watch that. I like to see that. I like to be encouraged by that. And, that, and, and, and to watch that, um, it's like the top 10, the sports center, top, top 16, cool moment. But, but it, it, it's more than that. It's so exciting, so encouraging to see people make the decision um, to follow Christ. Make the decision to say, you know what, I'm in. I'm fully committed. I'm following Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and, and, and I'm going to make him as, as the, the, my Savior. And so uh, Matthew chapter 28, Matthew chapter 28, this is, this is my life verse. This is my favorite verse of the, of the whole Bible, all 66 books. I've studied a lot. I come back to these two here. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus gives us the great commission, the great thing for us to do. Go into all the world, tell them about Jesus, baptize them in his name, and then teach them to obey everything he has commanded us. But all too often we forget about the second half of that verse. We only focus on the first half. We, we go into the, the world and we make disciples. We, we baptize them and, and then what? And then we, we, we baptize them and that, that's it. That's in game, right? That's all we have to do. We just have to baptize them and then and that's it. But if we were to do that, then we would cut off the second half of the verse. The second half, verse 20, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. If we, if we treat salvation, if we treat baptism as the end game, then we would only follow Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. And that would be all of our focus, would just be the baptism. 
Just be the, the coming to Christ. But there's this second half of the story. There's the second half of the story where we grow in Christ. Where we come to know who he is. So, so we, we, and if, if we only treat it as the first half, if we only do the first half of it, and we only count baptisms, it's like the missionary who receives a letter from his supporting churches. This happens a lot, I'm, I'm sure. And, and he receives the, the letter from his supporting churches, and they say, just a questionnaire to see how things are going in, in the mission field. And I was reading a, one of these reports, and, and so this is sent to a missionary in, in Thailand. So this is a guy in Thailand who's working with uh, people who live in Thailand who are Buddhist and very um, against the gospel and want nothing to do with it. And so I can imagine the language barriers, the cultural barriers, the, the religious barriers, and he's doing the best that he can to share the good news of Jesus Christ in a, in a hostile environment to Jesus. And this church sends him a letter and says, how are things going? Because on behalf of the church, the church is doing the best that they can. They have a limited budget. They have a limited amount of missions money and they want to invest it wisely. And so they want to get the most out of what they're giving. And so he goes through the questionnaire. At the end of the questionnaire is the question that he dreads the most. How many baptisms have you had this year? How many baptisms have you had this year? And if that's all we focus on, now I'm, I'm being a little, playing a little uh, devil's advocate here. If that's all we focus on is just the baptisms, then we miss the second half of the equation. If, 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 if that's all we see is just, did, did you baptize a lot of people? Did you bring a lot of people into your church and, and baptize them all and get a lot of numbers, a lot of quantity, but no quality is that successful ministry so I think there's a second part of the equation I think yes we're called to bring people to the Lord and that's exciting and that blesses my heart and I enjoy watching the highlight reel because I like to see that, that 16 people last November to November 16 people made a decision to follow Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior but there's a second part to that there's a second and, and when I say okay I've said it a couple times I've said a number, 16 people. And I don't want you to hear a number. I don't want you to hear stats and goals and stuff like that because those are 16 individual people who have a specific story and who mean the world to Jesus Christ. And if that, that baptism reel was one person, that's exciting. Because last time I checked, when someone comes to know who Jesus Christ is, they have a party in heaven. And so we have a party here on earth. And whether it's one or 16 or 50, it doesn't make a difference. We're excited. But the rest of the story is that we're called to grow. Real quick, I, I told you to look up Matthew chapter 28. Raise your Bible. Just hold it up if you've looked that up already. Just, if you've got it, just raise it up right now. That's cool. Look around, church. Look around. I'm going to cry. You, you all get bonus two thumbs up, okay? That is a blessing to my heart. Because if the only spiritual litmus test that we have is, is how many baptisms do we have, then we're ignoring the second half of the story. But I am a very proud preacher. Okay, I'm just going to throw the other church in the bus here because we went and visited with a different church over the, over the vacation. And I think I saw two Bibles in the whole place. And they were ones that people left. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> you all, it, is, it blesses my heart that you bring your Bibles, that you take the time to look the scripture up in here. That's, that's not going to get you into heaven. But, but I believe that's a sign of spiritual growth. I believe that's a sign that you want to know what this says, that you want to know what, what's in here. That I'm not just cooking up stuff. Uh, yeah, so the Bible verse today is uh, God blesses those who uh, give him financially money. That's in Third Peter. You'd look at me and be like, that's not in the Bible. That's crazy. You just made that up, preacher. You're totally making that up. No, we have to be students of this book. That's the second part of the equation. That's when Jesus says, listen, go out, go baptize and teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. The second part of the equation. If you've got your Bibles, since you've got your Bibles, 
And since we're not going to treat, we're not going to treat salvation like, like, a, like a AAA card. Who has AAA? Does anybody have AAA? This is, they're not paying me to do this, but, but I actually did this this morning. I, I, I went and, and I was like, oh, that's going to be a great illustration. And I was planning it this week. And I said, do I even have it? And so I grabbed my wallet. And I opened up my wallet, and I was flipping through frantically. I was like, where's it at? Where's it at? Where's it at? I was like, oh, yeah, back here, behind other things that I don't use, is my AAA card. Do you know why I don't know where this card is? Because I don't care about it. I mean, I do, but I don't. I only care about this car, this card, when I lock my keys in my car or when it breaks down and I need to be towed. That's it. That's all I care about. If you, if you don't have a AAA membership, they're not paying me to say this, but that, that's nice, okay? If my car breaks down, I can have them come and tow my car. But if my car is running fine, I don't call them. We don't talk. I don't read their pamphlets. I want to give them the least amount of money I possibly can and get the best service I can get, right? And, and, and the rest of the year, I don't care about it. I just put it in my wallet, put it in my pocket, and stick it right here and don't care about it. I think for a lot of people, that's how we treat salvation. I want to get the most that I can. I want to do the least I have to do. And I'm going to get the get out of hell free card, put it in my pocket, and leave it right there. And tell them in a pinch, oh, I'm about to die. Jesus, help me out. I came to church like three times. It's good enough, right? And we missed the second half. Get your Bibles. Get your Bibles. Go to 2 Peter. 2 Peter. Chapter 3, I believe I've got a flip page here. 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. Towards the end of the Bible there. Because we are called as Christians, we are called to grow spiritually. Spiritual growth starts at salvation and it never stops. Spiritual growth starts at salvation and it never stops. Our salvation is not like a AAA card that we stick in our pocket and leave it there. And don't focus, don't worry about it until we're in a pinch. Salvation is just the beginning to a spiritual growth, to a life of dedicated growth. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, right there at the end. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Just what Jesus said. Teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Grow in the, grow, the, the, the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. While we're still here, we're called to grow. Salvation is just the beginning. Those people who made their, their decision to follow Christ have started their walk with the Lord. They have that little, that little seedling over there. And they've started to grow. And they've started to, to grow in the Lord and become more like Him each and every day. I want to do a, a, a quick survey. Hold up five fingers, four fingers and a thumb for you really literal people. Okay, five fingers, one hand. We're going to do a quick, quick survey. Do you have perfect attendance? If you have perfect attendance, if you can answer this question perfectly, then you can leave up a, a finger. Perfect attendance for church attendance for 2018. Yeah. Doing good. Doing good. Oh, yeah. I think, yeah. No felonies for 2018. No misdemeanors. Make it a little harder. Okay. No traffic violations. <laughs> you almost got a misdemeanor, didn't you? It's okay. This, we, we like you still. So. Okay. No complaining. Oh, well, I might have complained a little bit. Um, did my devotions. Not out of compulsion. Got to read my Bible because I'm the preacher and I should at least do it every night. But because I wanted to. Because I wanted to have a quiet time. Because I wanted to grow in the Lord. Every dollar I've spent has been spent in a way that honors God, takes care of my family. It's the best use of what God has given me. I haven't lied. I haven't lost my temper. I've been completely perfect. We're just going for a week here, okay? Just a week. Who's been perfect for 2018? Put your hand up real high, because we're all gonna give you a look. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get it from us legalistic Pharisees. No, we can't make it. And because none of you, I'm not, in, I'm not either, because none of us are perfect, then that means we still have room to grow. 
You might be 37. You might be 47, 57, 67, 87, 97. But you still have room to grow. It blows my mind that people think, I can come to Christ, I can, I can come to salvation and, and, and just be done. It's just game over from there. It's not. It's just the beginning that we're called to grow in, in, in grace and knowledge, that we're called to, um, to learn and to follow everything that Christ has uh, called us to do in Matthew chapter 28. The, the gospel life, the past few weeks last year, we were talking about the gift of salvation and receiving that gift of salvation. And how God gives us that salvation through grace. It's by his grace that we're saved. Through faith. Which leads us to repentance. And in baptism at the time of which we receive the double cure. Forgiveness of sins. And the filling of the Holy Spirit. Now what? Okay so we've got the salvation thing. What's the next step? So this, this next series that we're going to do here. Is the next step. The gift of my life. The second half of salvation is the growing part. Is the part where we look at 2 Peter 3 and we see the simple call to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior. To do the work. This sounds like it's gonna be, it's gonna be hard. It sounds like we're gonna have to do a lot of work. Wouldn't it be simpler? Wouldn't it be simpler if we just shut our Bibles, just closed them and didn't learn anything else? Because if we didn't know it was a rule, then we couldn't break it, right? Ignorance is bliss. We could just live that way, and it would be great. But listen, if we live that way with our diet, I thought pork rinds were, were appropriate form of protein. Come to find out, it's not. It's not. But if I didn't know that, I would have proceeded on my pork rind-only diet. I haven't ate a pork rind in so long. Those things are nasty. It's the first thing that came to my mind. But you know what I'm saying. Like, if ignorance was bliss, then we would just live blindly, and we would be walking towards uh, health, death, spiritual death. If I close my eyes to the Bible and close my eyes to what Jesus wants to teach me, then I will continue in persistent sin. And sin always leads to separation. From, breaks my relationship with God. Breaks my relationship with my family. It hurts those around me. Sin is absolutely destructive. And so I need to continue to, to grow. And this new year, as we, we start new year 2018, I want us as a church to be convicted, to be challenged, to grow. To desire to grow. There are, there are a couple big fancy theological words. I love throwing these up. Here we go. Number one, uh, letter A, justification. Have you heard that word justification? We've talked about that a few times. Justification. When we receive the gift of salvation, Jesus looks at us and we are justified. Uh, easy way to define justification is just as if I'd never sinned. Justification was when Jesus looks at us and says, you are innocent. God serves as the judge and looks at us and sees that we have a legal problem. The legal problem is the sin in our life. And because we sin, because we broke the law, because we've done the crime, we have to pay the time. But God looks at us and says, you're justified because Jesus takes your place and I forgive you of all your sins. Justification is an instant, one-time, happened uh, cleansing. Instantly. When you come to Christ by grace, through faith and baptism, when we come to salvation, we are justified, cleansed, Done. Completely done. It's not progressive. Not if I improve my church attendance, then I'll be justified. Nope, nope. You're cleansed. You're cleansed. Your sins are washed away, past, present, and future. They're gone, done. As far as the east is to the west, they're done. We've been declared innocent. We've been regenerated. Regeneration. This is when I talked about the double cure in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. What shall we do? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the forgiveness of sins. That's justification. That's the legal stuff is forgiven. And the filling of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes inside of us and makes us new. Regeneration, being brought back to life, made alive, made new again, because in our old sin, we are dead. That's a spiritual sickness that's really bad. We're really sick and dead in our transgressions. And it's not until the Holy Spirit comes into our life that we can be made alive and made new. And then there's the process of sanctification. 
Sanctification is holiness, being, being set apart, being made holy. It is the progressive, ongoing process of being made holy. In 1 Peter, uh, 1 Peter 1, we can go there, that's close. 1 Peter, a couple pages to the left. Chapter 1, verse 15 through 16. Do you hear those pages turning? That is a beautiful sound. That's Ron Arnett, church in Kentucky. But it's still a good sound. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15 and 16. This is our call. This is, this is sanctification worked out right here. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. My dad used to say that to us when we would leave to go hang out with our friends. That's a horrible thing for a parent to say. <laughs> Come on. Be holy. <clears throat> be Christ-like. Be like your heavenly father. Be perfect. I haven't attained either. And so that means I have room to grow. That means I have room for sanctification. Uh, we miss B. B is regeneration, made alive, made new. And then C is sanctification, holiness, set apart, made holy. C is that last one. Sanctification, set apart, being made holy. That is a continuous work in our life. That's something that I'm not, I'm not going to reach. I'm not going to reach perfection. If you notice underneath number one, there was a little asterisk behind it. Spiritual growth starts at salvation and never stops. That never stops because I'm not going to become, I'm not going to make it. But I'm going to continue to try. I'm going to continue to try and continue to grow each and every single day. You're sitting here and you're thinking, this sounds like it's going to be hard. This sounds like it's going to be hard work and you're absolutely right. It is this, 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 um, a bad theology that we come to Christ, we come to salvation, and then we sit back and relax. We come to Christ and then let him do all the work. Yes, he does the salvation work, but we have to partner with the Holy Spirit to do the sanctification work. We have to partner with the Holy Spirit to do the hard work of unlearning the bad habits I've developed over the past couple of years, past lots of years. But why would we want to grow? Why would we want to do that? It just seems so, so hard. Why wouldn't we just stay at the beginning where it's simple? While we had a chance to, uh, to go over um, this past week, we had a chance to go home and to see our families go back and forth. Uh, at Kelly's house and her family, there are 10 grandchildren, 11. There's one coming. Uh, and our two oldest, our two are the oldest at, at 9 and 10. So when we go there, it is a mess. Of, of grandkids just running and screaming and ah! and so we hide in the basement and play ping pong and if the kids come down go back up you're not allowed to be down here but 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 we get to go back and get to see aunts and uncles and cousins and um and while we're on our time off i took it upon myself to organize our our, our library of digital pictures okay my wife has collected quite um, a library of digital pictures. She has a very photogenic husband. And so we, we have a wealth of pictures. And what typically happens is before we go on a Christmas, like a little vacation or, or go back to see family, is we'll, is we'll clean the phones off and the cameras off and we'll put them on a file that says phone and, and, and camera dump to be organized at a later date. You do it too, okay? And so you have this, this, this little laptop at home that's got a million files of tons of duplicate, triplicates, quadruplicates, just tons. It was just, so I did that. I organized them all, kicked out all the duplicates, and, and, and did that over the past week. But as I was going through them, you find those old cute pictures. You know, when your kids were adorable, and you find those family videos where they're talking, and it's so cute, and you're like, oh, look how little they are, the little cheeks, your pudgy little faces. And it's good, and you look back at the old pictures when they're old little kids, and then you see pictures of you as a child, and you're little, and you had fluffy hair, or hair at all, and, and, and it's, it's good, and you, and you go back, and you remember, oh, man, I wish I could go back. And so I was reflected on that when we saw our parents. My mom was sitting on the couch, and I just crawled up on her lap. I said, Mom, it's so good to see you. Just, you're looking at me right, because I would break her femur if I got on her lap. I would crush. My mama is tiny. She's like a third of what I weigh, and I would just squish her. I can't do that. I don't think she would. I think she would let me. I think she'd be like, okay, this is weird, but whatever, because she's a mom. But, but she looks at me, and she says, listen, you're 37. It's time for you to, to grow. 
and to be a man and to have your own home and have your own family. And you can come see us sometimes, but then you've got to leave. <laughs> I, why would she say that to me? But she does. You've got to go. But that's what we do with our kids, right? It's good to see them. Yeah, Abby, Abby's here. All oh, the favorite is back. It's good. And, and maybe you get to stay longer than I get to stay, but eventually my parents are like, get out. Okay, she doesn't let you leave. Oh, man. Walter, you've got to take care of that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> my desire for my kids is yes, to look back at those pictures when they're cute, but I want them to grow. I want them to take flight. It'll break my heart. But yesterday I said to Anna, she said, who will walk me down the aisle? And I was like, that's me. I will walk you down the aisle. I will be sobbing. I will be a train wreck of emotions. And then I will take my Bible. Who gives this woman to be married, this man? And I will be, I'll just shatter my life. But it's what I desire for my kids. And it's the same of what our Heavenly Father desires for us. That we grow. That we don't stay as infants. That we crave the pure spiritual growth. That we don't stay and milk our whole lives. That we grow. That we move. That we are no longer the same person that we were in 2017. That 2018 is the year that we dedicate ourselves to growing and to becoming more like Christ. That we, we dedicate ourselves to the spiritual sanctification. So yes, this is going to be challenging. Salvation is a free gift. It is. We just talked about the gift of salvation. Salvation is a free gift, but it will cost you your life. Well, that hardly seems like a free gift. I wanted salvation to be like AAA, where I give them the least, but I get the most. I want to give them the least. I want to pay you the, the least amount of money I have to pay you. But when I'm in a pinch, I want the most service, the most protection, the most whatever I can get from you. <laughs> There's a story of a woman who called around to all the different churches in, in town and she kept calling through and calling through and she finished calling through the phone book and she said, I think I've found it where I can get salvation for the cheapest and the freest. What she meant is where she could get the most and do the least. That's not here. Yes, salvation is free. It is a gift. It's nothing, we don't earn it. But it will cost you your life. Luke chapter 9, Luke chapter 9, verse 23. A close second. Probably, yes, yes, I would say my second favorite Bible verse. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. This, this, this bad theology that salvation is a one and done, and then we just sit back and God just blesses us and fixes up everything. No, we have a, we have a lot of work to do, partnered with the Holy Spirit. It's a free gift. It is a free gift, but it will cost you your life. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Jesus speaking here. And then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple, you want to come to salvation? You want to be a disciple? You must deny yourself, take up your cross daily, and follow me. That sounds like really hard work. But that's what the Christian walk is. This, this is bad theology to say that we can get the most and do the least. That's how it worked, though. Christ did the most. We did the least. In salvation, he did the most. He did all the work. We did nothing. Now we get it. We get salvation for free. But the second half of the coin is the rest of our life where we live and we grow. Not out of obligation. Not to pay him back as a thank you. As a I love you. And daily I take up my cross and I follow after Jesus. And I give my life back to him. I give it all back to him. I remember as a youth minister probably 12, 13 years ago, talking with a young guy. We're playing basketball. And he goes, man, church is awesome. All I have to do is show up on Wednesday night for an hour and that's it. I thought, that's the start. But once you get into this, it's going to take everything you have. It's so worth it. It's so worth it that we give everything we have back to him. It'll cost you your life. And so we give our life back to him and we desire to grow in grace and knowledge. We come back to Second Peter. We just come back to that. We grow in grace and knowledge. Underneath grace, I want you to put doing. And underneath knowledge, I want you to put knowing. Knowing and doing. That's it, right? If we could get those two right. Knowing 
what we're supposed to know from the Bible, and doing. Here and here. I need to know it and I need to do it. I think I know more than I do. But I need to match both of those up. The knowing and the doing. The growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I grow. And so each and every one of you are at a different spot here this morning. But we already established that none of us are perfect, okay? And since none of us are perfect, we all have room to grow. We agreed on that. So the responsibility is in your lap. I can't make you grow. I, I can't make myself grow. I can hope. I can, through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, we're going to talk about him next week. Desire to grow. But I want you to desire to grow. I don't know what that means in your life. Maybe that means you get involved with a Sunday school class. Maybe that means that this is the year that you are dedicated to being a student of this and that devotion time, that reading this is not out of compulsion because the preacher's gonna make you feel guilty if you don't bring your Bible to church, but I will, okay? But you do this because you want to, because you desire to be in this. Because, because we should be different, church. There should be something different about it. This, this, would, this, would, this would be a, 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 a fail on my part as a preacher. If we had tons of baptisms every year, but our marriages of our congregation were just falling apart left and right. Well, we get a lot of people to come to know Jesus Christ, but the second half where we talk about what a godly marriage looks like, we've missed that. So our marriages fall apart. We get a lot of people to make a decision, but our kids, our children, are just going crazy. Our finances are a train wreck. We don't look anything else. There's no set apart, holy living in our lives, because we haven't remembered to focus on the second part of this. And if we fail to focus on the second part, come to Christ, live a holy life. If we fail to do that, we are bad representations of Jesus Christ. You know people like this. You know me. And I'm a person like this at times. At times, I am selfish, and I am sinful, and I bring the name of Christ down. It was 1995. The coolest band in the Christian airwaves was DC Talk, which is funny, because they're still the coolest band in the airwaves. You'll have to look that one up to figure that out, but you'll understand. In 1995, they released a song, What If I Stumble? At the beginning of the song, Brennan Manning is recorded as saying this, the greatest single cause of atheism in the world today is Christians who acknowledge Jesus with their lips, then walk out the door and deny them with their lifestyle. That is what an unbelieving world simply finds unbelievable. Oh, I go to church. But when it comes to the way I speak, it's no different. Is it? is it? Is it your story? Oh, I go to church, but my marriage is, is hanging on my threads. Is that your story? Oh, I go to church. My finances are a train wreck. Is that your story? Well, I thought, I thought that if I came to Christ, then he would fix my marriage and he would fix everything and he would do all that stuff. He can when he starts the work of my heart. See, if I want a good marriage, it doesn't start with elbows. Hey, listen up. It's talking to you. It starts, yeah, it's funny. It, but Because it, you get it. It doesn't start with good elbows. It starts with good ears. Because when I read this, I don't see what she should do I see what I should do. And that's where it starts. Jesus, I want you to fix my marriage. I need you to fix my life. Jesus, I want you to fix my finances. I need to fix my heart. Jesus, I want, to, I want you to fix my, the way I speak. It starts with my heart. It starts with sanctification. That's your call, church, to desire to grow. Are you in? Let's do it. God, we thank you so much. We thank you that you've given your word to us, that you brought us to salvation, and now we turn around and we live our lives as a gift to you. 
that we give everything we have back to you as a response, as, a, as, a, as an offering. It says thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. The second part of the, the story is being made holy. The first part of the story is justification, where, where God looks at us and says, you are forgiven, you are innocent. And it starts with your response to salvation. Are you in? Do you want to call Jesus as the Savior of your life? That gift is available to you this morning right now. I pray you make that decision as we stand and sing our song of invitation.